and we've got the recording going and uh, participants may keep trailing in, but I'm going to hand it over to uh, Dawn and Rita at Lenore Rhine. Go ahead, guys. Good morning. Thank you, Greg. We appreciate your assistance this morning. Hello, everybody. We're very glad to have you all here this morning. I'm Rita Johnson. I'm with Lenore Rhine University, as Greg mentioned. I'm Dean of University Library Services, and I've been at Lenore Rhine for the past six years and have been an academic librarian for uh, many centuries <laughs> before that. And I'm Dawn Barrand. I'm an uh, reference and instruction librarian at Lenore Run University and I'm new to the library. I've only worked here a little over a year so I'm, I'm new to the team. But she's a wonderful addition. We're very glad to have her. So I am going to uh, pull up my screen and start our presentation. Here are, uh, this is our presentation, Do the Evolution, Adapting Our Instruction Programs for Our Particular Learning Community Needs. And here are the takeaways for you today. One is a model of our library instruction that we use for our first year and transfer students. We used a variety of adaptations and what we were considering innovative. We also want to give you our perspective on the use of the flipped classroom approach. Dawn? Yes. Can I, did you guys, uh, did you mean to start that desktop chair there? Uh, I, Oh, did we not? <laughs> make, make sure you click, I'm trying to get out of my Make sure you click that share screen button. Day. Sorry, folks. That's no problem. That's it's all good. Just we'll start again. Now we're, ready. <laughs> we're ready to share the <laughs> screen, you. folks. Now you can see what we're seeing. There it all comes. All right, here okay. we go. Thank Beautiful. you, Greg. No That's worries. Why we need you. Okay. So Lovely. Here we are. Here are our takeaways, yet again, our model of library instruction and our perspective on the use of the flipped classroom approach. Uh, we are going to take questions at the end. If you don't have a mic to use at the end, or if you think of questions along the way, feel free to use the chat feature, and we'll address those at the end. And Don and I will be taking turns giving this presentation. I'll start. Uh, LRU, like many institutions, has a required first year students course uh, for first years and transfers. Uh, it covers acculturation to college and to LRU in particular. The library's approach to instruction for this course, uh, we've been involved in those courses in different ways, and it's evolved since this type of course began. As in most academic libraries, We've been conducting library instruction throughout the life of the library, traditionally in the English composition courses. Uh, in those, we gave a basic overview of library services and of resources for freshman level research. The librarians also tried to be included in these first year courses and other courses by basically asking to be allowed in, sometimes we were. That approach changed after 2008, and the library had to adapt to that. There were two innovations in that time, as a result of that time. The first was an active part in the core curriculum revision. Our core, curriculums is, core curriculum is the general ed series of courses. The librarians were invited to participate, which was somewhat new, and we did actively participate. That led that effort led to adoption of common learning goals for the university as a whole. A sub goal of one of them was that students know how to find, access, evaluate, and use information, of course, an information literacy component. And the second part, second innovation, was an active participation in restructuring those first year experience courses to include a mandatory information literacy component uh, that required that at least one class session in one semester uh, be designed and facilitated by a librarian. As I mentioned, we had tried to get into such courses in the past. Now faculty were mandated to invite us in. 
these were generally 50 minute sessions, not much different from one shot sessions that we've been having. But it was nice to know that we could call faculty and say, we'll be there. This new freshman class was known as FYE 191 or just the FYEs. They began in 2010. There was a common set of modules for acculturation. Beyond that, the instructors were free to choose the theme for the rest of the content of the course. So each FYE course was different. The librarians obtained the list of courses, themes, and instructors, and we divided the classes among ourselves. At that time, there were three full-time librarians who did instruction. In the first year, we held over 20 unique sessions to 400 some odd uh, FYE students. With this new FYE, to distinguish instruction in those classes from the English 131 classes, the traditional uh, library instruction setting, the librarians develop lesson plans and assignments specific to the unique content of each FYE course so that we weren't repeating the same kind of instruction given in the English 131s. This differentiation worked for several years, but FYE instructors also began requiring a research paper, which was a requirement in the English courses. And so the instruction for the FYEs and the English courses often seemed to be repeats. In 2013 and 14, the university changed its FYE course that it had for transfer students, and that was referred to as LRU 101. In the past, some library instruction had been provided, but the course instructors did it. In the fall of 2013, the library was approached by the chair of the core curriculum to provide specific library instruction by librarians for the spring semester classes, LRU classes. There were one to two sections offered each spring with perhaps 12 or so students in each. By this time, we had three full-time librarians and two part-time instruction librarians available. So we had the staffing to accommodate this request, but it did require several adaptations. The first was the different class format. The LRU courses were a half semester course, eight weeks rather than the 16. It was offered in a mostly online format and it served slightly older students, uh, some who had already had this type of class already. These were significant differences from the FYE 191 courses, so we had to adapt instruction to that environment. We decided it was more efficient to have a common instruction set for the LRUs, rather than try to have unique instruction as we did for each of the FYE courses. So to accommodate that, we decided to present the content using videos. This would be the first time that the librarians had ever presented instruction this way. We selected six topics, one on the catalog, on databases, scholarly and popular articles, plagiarism, citations, and then remote access. We used backward design to create learning objectives for each topic. We wrote scripts to ensure that the videos would cover those specific objectives. We illustrated the scripts that we wrote with suggested screenshots, and we created, using Google Forms, short quizzes for each video so we would have an evaluation of them. We intentionally made the videos short, two to three minutes each. One librarian who knew the program, Camtasia, created all the videos. And here is an example of the videos. The first and the last screenshots were the same, except for the title. And within them, as I mentioned, we use screenshots and we use very simple procedures. We just used highlighting or boxing or uh, 
uh, cursoring to show what was happening on the screen. So these were very simply produced and we hope they would be effective. The quizzes were questions based on information taken directly from the video, such as in the using the online catalog, was perform a keyword search for Libya in education and pick the number of results closest to your results, or find the book called Southern Storm, what's the call number? Each of the videos had four to five questions max. The intention was to keep the video short, keep the quizzes short so the students would do them. Because, back to our screen, because there would be one face-to-face -face session for these LRU courses, we adopted the flipped classroom approach as well as the videos. The students were to watch the videos and complete the quizzes before our face-to-face -face session. And this was also a first, this approach, a first for instruction at Rudisil Library. In the classroom, we planned that the students would work together on an assignment which we created. Again, an assessment of how well the students had learned the information. We realized, however, early on several challenges that would require changes. For example, getting the students from an asynchronous online class to come into the library at one time, even given several, several different time periods for them to come in, was really unworkable. And we realized we needed a grade for each student on the assignment, uh, which covered all six of the videos. So we couldn't have the students work in groups on the assignment in the class, uh, which we realized after the first class. So we needed to figure out something else to do. And we realized that just having students work on a project wasn't very interactive for the librarians and students. And so we needed more interactivity, but we had to figure out how to accomplish that in a mostly online environment. So I'm going to turn this over now to Don. Okay, hello. So now we're going to talk about um, another adaptation we did in the 2013 to 2014 year. Um, and one of those was a pilot form that we began to use. Um, so we piloted a short online evaluation form with an embedded assessment question that we used at the end of each class that was taught, um, including the LRU classes. Um, and this slide here is a somewhat modified copy of our form. It's a Google form. There's eight questions. Uh, five of them are yes, no, or NA, and three of them require text answers. Um, and what we found with that was that the evaluation form worked well. The embedded question results were excellent. Um, it indicated that nearly every student demonstrated that uh, learning at least one thing about information literacy skills that will help them. Um, and so, you know, what we found too, the results, especially for the FYE and LRU classes from the questions of what can we do to improve and what other comments do you have, were very negative. Um, we had way too many responses such as went too fast, covered too much information, was too complicated, no hands-on time, couldn't follow on computer, been there, done that, waste of time, overkill, and our personal favorite, boring. <laughs> Here's Rita. It was not fun compiling those results after the first <laughs> evaluation. Uh, so, uh, hard as it was, we, we took the results as being significant, and so we made significant changes in the teaching of our FYEs during the next year. Some of those were starting uh, some of the FYE sessions with a YouTube or other video, intentionally reducing lecture time and increasing hands-on time in sessions, consciously reducing the number of resources covered at any one session, Having instructors post our handouts, PowerPoints, worksheets, whatever we had for the students, 
posting those on their uh, learning management sites prior to our instruction session. And finally, well, not finally, getting embedded into several of the courses, which allowed us librarians uh, greater communications with and assistance to the students at point of need. And by getting embedded, I mean having us added to the learning management site for that particular FYE course that we were teaching. Uh, a very nice change, coincidentally, that happened was that we were able to rearrange tables and chairs in the library's classroom to seat students in groups rather than lecture style. Uh, the room was re uh, enlarged uh, thanks to a remodeling that happened with other uh, remodeling in the library. So we had space for the students to work together if needed and for the librarians to be able to walk around and more easily and uh, help students. The responses to the evaluation form at the end of that year showed a huge improvement from the previous year. There were only 21 negative comments out of, uh, I forget how many, over 300 responses, and really only five negative responses in the vein of, this was a waste of time, I've had it before, boring, that, that always comes up, but it, there were fewer boring comments. Whoops, sorry, going back. Um, we also made significant changes in the LRU courses. Uh, Every fall, there were six to seven sessions uh, that had, again, 12, perhaps 12 to 18 students. We d dropped the requirement of a face-to-face -face meeting. It just did not work at all. So we embedded a librarian in every LRU section. The librarian created a short introduction video. Hi, I'm Rita. I'm glad to be your embedded librarian. I'm interested in this, that, the other thing. Feel free to ask me any questions. Each librarian posed a question, the same question, at the beginning of the LRU course on finding information. What was a recent research project you might have done? How did you find information on it? And then we responded to each student uh, with a, some very positive response as in, oh, that was an interesting use of newspapers to find current information. You might be interested in knowing that we have this particular newspaper collection for you. Some responses like that. We also were responsible for posting the online module, and the online module was the videos, the quizzes, and the assignment that covered all six videos. Uh, into the learning management system, and we're using Canvas at this point. We also corrected the assignment. Those quizzes were self-grading. At the end of 2016, um, the librarians also in the FYE classes were using the same changes we had made. We also added the use of other technologies such as polling software and we got similar positive results with just the usual, had this before, been there, done that, boring. Very few of those in comparison to the 2013-14 year. So we're, we're pleased with the work that we've done uh, in those classes. And back to Dawn. Okay, this next part um, looks at our uh, FYEs for 2016 to 2017, and uh, this part's special to me because I, I started to work at the Rudisil Library in January 2016. So this is when I came into to what was going on. Um, so at this point, you know, the, the librarians were continuing to modify instruction in ways that would increase student learning. Um, three of the librarians, and I was one of those three, uh, piloted a flipped classroom model for the FYE courses. Um, so we used three of the videos that had already been used in the LRU courses. Um, the videos we chose to use were using the library online catalog, accessing and searching online, and citing in plagiarism. And we also use those quizzes along with the videos. Now we did not have an assignment for the students. And the goal was to eliminate having to cover some very basic material in the actual classroom session and to be able to use that instruction session by uh, responding to student questions, 
um, covering any additional topics the instructor requested, um, allowing for more activities and hands-on time. So we were able to do things like um, use Kahoot or a Padlet or Poll Everywhere, things like that within the class to make it interactive. And we were also able to give the students more hands-on time to use what we were teaching them. Um, a second goal of the flipped classroom was to help differentiate the FYE instruction literacy sessions from the English 131 sessions. Um, as we discussed earlier, because both of these were requiring a research paper, um, the information liter literacy instruction was very much being repeated and duplicated in both sets of classes. Um, and then the next adaptation that we tried to use at that point was a, a common assessment. So in the fall of 2016, the librarians and the English program faculty um, had a discussion about developing one assignment that all students in the FYE classes would take that was relevant to one of the modules within FYE that could be used as both an information literacy and a writing assessment. Um, and currently the library has created a draft of this assignment. Um, the group also discussed strengthening students' research skills by possibly increasing information literacy training in the FYE, FYE courses so the English uh, courses could focus on developing research skills. Here's Rita. Thanks. The librarians decided to propose to the English program faculty that they use a flipped classroom approach as well for information literacy in the English 131 classes. Again, this was to differentiate instruction between uh, the two places, the two uh, sets of courses. Um, we wanted the English 131 information literacy uh, instruction to focus more on developing research skills than on giving students very basic introductory uh, overviews of our resources. So we proposed a different set of videos, one covering more advanced topics. Uh, these might include strategies for choosing topics and refining topics, basic searching strategies, and more emphasis on scholarly articles and on popular articles. We've mentioned this to the English faculty uh, as we sent them a draft of our proposed uh, uh, information literacy and writing assessment. And they have not yet agreed, but they've agreed to discuss this. Will they adopt it? We hope so. We'll find out. Back to Don. <laughs> okay, so to sum it up, uh, today we've shared our model of FYE library instruction and the steps we have taken to create this model. As you form your own model, just keep in mind that there will be trial and error to find out what works best for your school. We feel that the evolution of our library instruction program has been successful in its ability to adapt and be responsive in meeting the needs of our population. We're looking forward to our next innovation of using a flipped approach for library instruction in English 131 classes. Um, and we'd also, we'd like to thank the NCLA College and University Section Committee members for creating and pulling together this virtual conference and giving us this opportunity to share our experiences. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing other presentations today. And we also wanted to thank Greg Simmons for his technical assistance. Thank you. Great. Um, um, our hard stop, uh, according to the information I was given, was uh, 1045. Does that sound right? So you, Yes. So um, I muted everyone's mic before the session started. Um, if, you, if you have a question, there are two ways. Um, we have some time here, ample time for questions. So if you have questions of the presenters, you can, in the conference window, click the chat tool. And if you don't have a microphone um, at your machine, you can certainly put your question in the chat and Don and Rita can see it there. Or 
um, your microphone is muted right now, but that doesn't mean you can't unmute it. So if you have a question and you just want to ask it verbally, um, in the conference window at the bottom left, there's a little microphone icon. It will have a red slash through it because I muted you, but you can unmute your microphone and ask your question that way as well. Oops. And I suppose while I have the floor, I'm going to repost into the chat a couple of important links. Uh, if you wanted to go ahead and and uh, either copy those or click on those and and make a bookmark. The first link is we've the the session is being recorded, and at that first link will be the archived recordings where you can you can watch these later. And the second link at the end of the session, um, there's a Google evaluation form for the session that you can click and provide some feedback that way. So those two links are in the chat for you now. And with that, I'll just, I'll open the floor um, and you guys can ask questions of the presenters um, however you'd like. Okay, and Greg, I'm going to stop my screen sharing so I can see the chat. Sure, that's fine. And now we have our big Brady Bunch view. I like this. Hello, everybody. Okay, let's see if I can see the questions. Uh, no questions. There comes one from Janelle. And um, I believe, um, I believe Janelle is the, unless somebody hasn't weighed in, I think Janelle is, wins the long distance, the digital long distance award. I think she's out in Arizona. <laughs> yes, thank so. you Jan uh, Janelle for being part of us from Arizona. And thanks for your comments. Uh, dynamic forms, we have not used that, uh, but that's something that we should definitely look into to get more results uh, and more kinds of reports. So thank you for that. Do you want to talk about how we create our campus and the instructor can see that? I'm going to turn that over to Don. <laughs> I was just going to make a comment that our learning management system is Canvas. And so when we, the quizzes are all in Canvas and uh, those are graded automatically, and also our assignments, we provide feedback to the students and we grade those assignments. We're giving grading privileges for that. And so the instructors can, can look at that and, and see how the students did. Jan Janelle, if you, if you have any information about um, dynamic forms, feel free to post, you know, if you've got a link to a help file or a link to some examples uh, or anything you, help, you found helpful, uh, in creating and deploying dynamic forms, feel free to post that into the uh, chat. That'll be recorded, and folks who watch the recording, that might be a good resource for them. Good. Other questions from anyone? Oh, hi, Elizabeth. Why was it not feasible to offer the in-person FYE instruction sessions? Uh, do you mean to the transfer students? Um, because we did have in-person FYE instruction. We did, for all of the FYE first year students, we did in-person instruction for all of those classes, just for the transfer students. Because of the, the unique nature of the transfer students, the they might be coming in needing to take uh, more upper level classes or a different set of classes than the freshmen might take the decision had been made to have that transfer course the lru course a hybrid course so and it was asynchronous so we couldn't find a common time that the students were all out of a class. So they were taking a different set of classes than um, the, when ones that the freshmen uh, might be taking. And so it just did not work out that we could get more than three students in one time slot at any one time. So that's what made it uh, not feasible 
for us to have instruction. The, the other problem seemed to be that every, for the first two spring semesters when we were trying to have the transfer students come in in person, it snowed or hailed or sleeted on those days and we, it was hard enough trying to find times when students could come in and it was impossible to find uh, makeup times for them. So we thought it was just better to let go of the face-to-face -face sessions. Question. Another question. Other than the quiz, did we have a way of knowing how many students actually viewed the online instruction? Yes, we could look at the, st excuse me, the statistics from Vimeo. We couldn't necessarily uh, know what students had watched it, but we could know how many students had watched it. And knowing human nature, <laughs> we suspect that some students may have taken the quizzes without watching the videos. <laughs> um, we weren't going to try to make sure absolutely every student watched the videos absolutely before taking the videos. We just couldn't manage that. So we left it up to the students to... <sighs> <laughs> we left it up to the honors system, as, as Don says. Um, that's the best that we felt we could do. Oh, I'm, I'm sure, Marissa, <laughs> that none of your students ever would do something like that, Watch the vi take the quizzes without watching the videos. <laughs> but thank you for the comment. These are great questions. Yeah, I had I had said um, up in the chat during your presentation, just as an instructor, uh, my background, I, I, I work here in the Center for Academic Excellence at, at Appalachian, but I'm trained as a music theorist. I, I'm on the music faculty here and I teach music theory and I am a huge fan of the flipped classroom model. Um, you know, providing students with the instructional material and the exercises in ahead of the class meeting and then having an artifact to work on with them together after they've had some experience with it to make the most of our physical class meetings together. So, I mean, just at, in, in, in my experience as a, as a music theory professor, the flip classroom has served me very well. And that's with something as sort of um, artistic and squishy as music theory is. Um, I can imagine with with um, something that's a little more fact based, like you know how to use library resources, that could be especially valuable. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for that comment. Uh, it's fun using the flipped classroom too, because being able just to ask students if they have questions on the material covered, and then getting to work with them as they are doing some research so we can walk around and see how they're doing and how they're progressing. That's when the questions really come out, questions that they probably wouldn't think to ask if we were just going over it in lecture style format. So it's been more rewarding for me as well, just in terms of being able to connect more with the students. How about you, Don? Yeah, I've, I've had the same experience as well. It's been very helpful. Yeah, I see Janelle said flipped classrooms help to get some of the basics out of the way. So higher level concepts could be practiced. Exactly. The, with my colleagues I've worked with, um, the phrase I've always used when there's an expert in the room, right? I have found that the flipped classroom model, I mean, not to turn this into a flipped classroom presentation, but I have found that the flipped classroom model makes the most of the time when the experts in the room, the person with the terminal degree, who's the expert in the content to, to make the most of, of your time together with students. Um, I have found uh, exponentially more valuable when I can flip, flip the classroom, give them first contact with the material before we're together. Mm -hmm. Yes. And my experience has been that if you ask an instructor, 
what they want covered during a library instruction session is that they'll give you a list of 10 things, which is fine. We all want the students to know all of those 10 things, but we have about 40 minutes <laughs> in a one shot session. Um, so getting those basics out of the way, um, we can concentrate on more of the 10 things. I never, never try to cover the 10, 10 things. I'll, I'll nod and say, oh yes, yes, yeah, you, I can see you want all those covered and then I'll just cover what I think is important so that the students have time to understand a couple of concepts more thoroughly than having me lecture about 10 of them. So yes, well, uh, again, this is not necessarily totally about flipped classroom. That was an, one of the innovations that we started to use and have been using and are spreading, increasing the use of, and it's been better for our students as our assessment results show. And right. so we're, we're pleased about that. Yeah, big, big difference than when you have 45 class meetings. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have it's an embarrassment of riches. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've also found that perhaps because of the flipped classroom approach, that we have been invited back mm -hmm. into classes more frequently than when we just did straight lecture. Because I think, and I haven't asked faculty about that, because we, they can see that we're able to spend more time on important concepts and we can say throughout that one session, we can come back and give you five or 10 minutes on evaluating information again at the point you need it. And we can come back and talk about scholarly and popular again when you need it 10 or 15 minutes. And so the faculty can see that we don't want to take 10 of their class periods, but we're willing to come back at point of need and they can see that talking about what's important at point of need is helpful to their students and yet doesn't cut into enormous amounts of their own time. Right. Uh, we have another comment come in. I really like the idea of coming in with a task for the students to do and work on while you're actually there. I may ask instructors for a sample topic prior to doing the instruction mm -hmm. session. Yeah. Yes, Marissa, that's been very helpful for us. In fact, we likely will not go into a classroom unless a faculty member, the instructor, has an assignment for the students to work on. I'm sure all of you listening understand that. If the students don't have something to connect our instruction to, they, they don't listen, they don't pay attention, they're not engaged. But knowing that they are working on a research paper and giving them time to search on their topics and helping us work with each Help on um, giving us time to work with each individual student on that particular topic. They know when they leave this session that if they need three resources for the first draft of that paper, that they likely have gotten those three resources through the session with us. And it does make the students realize the sessions are helpful and can be rewarding for them in getting some work out of the way. Okay, um, we're coming up to the end of the session. I, I just one one last call. Any last quick questions? Um, I will one more time at the bottom of the chat paste those two links in where you can find the recordings for all the sessions that'll happen today. Um, that one link will get you to the archives for every session you may attend. Or if you if there were two sessions at the same time and you obviously only attended one but you want to watch the recording for the other later, that'll work. And the evaluation form, the little Google form. And with that, um, I'd like to thank Don and Rita for applying to present and for their, for their wonderful presentation. And I would like to thank all of you who took time out of your day to attend. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Greg, so much. We appreciate your help. Thank you, NCLA, CUS, and thank you all of you who attended and for your comments and ideas. We've learned from that. Thank you. And I wish everybody uh, uh, enjoy the rest of your digital day. Um, uh, I, hope, I hope it's uh, productive and enjoyable. And with that, I'm going to click the end meeting button here, and this session will automatically close. I'm going to remind myself to